right, Chris McClune here with Fire Apparatus and Emergency Equipment. Welcome to this edition of our podcast. I've got two new guests today uh, for this podcast. We haven't we haven't spoken with these two uh, individuals before. We're going to be talking about ground ladder assessment, not only for your district to find out what ground ladder assessment you need to uh, spec when you're when you're buying your next rig, but also how that assessment impacts the design of the of, of the rig you're buying. Got a lot to cover today with that. There's actually a lot more to it than you might think. My my guests today are Nick Wilbur, first of all, uh, and Wynn Slough. And we are going to uh, let them introduce themselves uh, in just a second here. When we're talking about ground ladders, there's a number of things you need to remember um, you know, about, about your district, about how it's going to impact design. Uh, we're going to get into some specification uh, information. I'm going to be talking a little bit about, you know, just how detailed you need to get in your specifications about the ground ladders that you are uh, that you are purchasing. But most importantly, well, uh, most importantly, uh, uh, we need to talk about some of the changes that just came. We're, we're in 2024 now. In January, we we welcomed in a new standard, NFPA 1900, and there were some changes in there that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the history of how we of, of 1901, where 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 we were at with ladders in the past, and now where we are today. So, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for joining me today, today and taking time. Nick, why don't you uh, why don't you introduce yourself first and tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, thank you, uh, Chris, for having us on. We appreciate the. Uh... Um, the time to, to talk about this important topic. So uh, my name is Nick Wilbur. Uh, I have about uh, 17 years in the fire service, started out small town in uh, New York in Howells, New York. Um, then I moved into uh, College Park uh, outside the University of Maryland. I uh, was a volunteer there, uh, still am, uh, for the last uh, 16 to 17 years. Um, lived in for six and a half, caught uh, a lot of uh, good work there. Got uh, a lot of education from a lot of smart people um, in the Prince George's County area. Uh, seven years ago, got hired in Arlington County, Virginia, on the other side of uh, D.C. Uh, been a career firefighter there for the last seven years. Um, and then just, uh, you know, I guess the, the side business of emergency vehicle response going around and uh, teaching uh, ladder truck uh, positioning, uh, talking fire trucks on specification, um, and then also assisting with uh, evaluations of people's fleets and fire protection studies to kind of talk about what people need in their fire departments. Um, that's a little bit about me, uh, Wynn. My name is Wynn Slough. Um, I spent the last 25 years as a member of the Union Fire Company in uh, southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, and in the last 22 years, I've been uh, employed with the Arlington County Fire Department as well, where I'm currently a captain too. Uh, in charge of the logistics section of the fire department. About three years ago, Nick asked me to come on board um, to uh, kind of try to replace Tom Shand. And I say that because it's very difficult to replace Tom Shand. And I'm sure if you're watching this, you've heard that name before. So I'm stepping in. I have large shoes to fill in that case. Um, but uh, we're doing the best we can with apparatus specification and trying to keep up uh, his standards, which uh, I think EBR is doing a great job at. Perfect. Great, guys. Well, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to a really good conversation today. Um, I'd like to start off with uh, the NFPA standard, the new standard NFPA 1900, but also talk a bit about NFPA 1901. For years, we have been using uh, a standard that really covered, you know, our core apparatus, pumpers, ladders, rescues on some of the more special special purpose vehicles that are that are out there. Now we have this mammoth uh, standard um, that covers you know our traditional apparatus plus ARF apparatus plus ambulances uh, plus wildland apparatus. We're going to focus today on you know ladder trucks and and, and pumpers and, and ladder complements for them. Uh, but Nick could uh, start off with you. Could you take me through um, where we have, how we've traveled to where we are today. What, you know, the, the ladder complement in the most recent edition of 1901 was not the same ladder complement uh, in previous editions. And um, 1900 has kind of kind of flipped the whole thing uh, on its lid. So t talk a little bit about the, the NFPA standards and, and, and how, how, how we, where, where we've come from to where we are today. 
Yeah, so uh, I think uh, it's kind of important to know around the you know the 1980s um, and the 70s, our ground ladder complement that was required by NFPA was 228 feet for for a ladder truck. Um, and around the 90s, that kind of changed a little bit. There was a uh, you know a, a pretty good overhaul of the uh, NFPA 1901 standard and some of the equipment, um, and they dropped that down from 228 feet to 115 feet for a ladder truck. Um, and then they also added on the caveat for a quint type apparatus, which is 85 feet was required for that. <clears throat> um, if you dive a little deeper, it was, you know, for a ladder truck, you had to have two extension ladders, two straight ladders and an attic ladder for a quint. It was one extension ladder, one straight ladder and one attic ladder. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting, um, you know, from that change in the nineties to today that that classification still exists. The problem is it was pulled from the NFPA standard and now was placed into the annex, um, which is still listed with the book of, uh, of NFPA 1900, but now it's not in the standard. It's, it's a re recommendation or I guess a um, kind of a reference point to kind of work off of. Uh, and just some statistics to kind of show how we've kind of reversed where the ladders have gone. Um, and, and UL mentions that in 1973, there was 23% uh, of the single family dwellings out there were two stories. Well, in 2008, that increased to 56%, right? Um, in 1973, the average square footage of a home was 1,660 feet, square feet. Um, in 2015, that increased to over 2,600 square feet. So our houses, as we see, are getting larger and our ladder complement kind of went the other direction. So I think it's an important thing to kind of understand as a consumer that, um, you know, remembering that NFPA and what it is is a minimum standard and, and you didn't really spec out what you need. Wayne, anything to add to, to any of that? No, I, I think that covers the history of it. I think, you know, the big point now is to look into the future and where we're going with 1900. Um, so, so like Nick had alluded to, NFPA 1900 removed the requirement uh, for any ground ladders, to be honest, and they moved it. Uh, from like Nick said, from the recommendation to the annex, which is really a recommendation to the recommendation. Uh, so uh, the reason that that was posted behind that and, and you know, Ed Rice uh, and um, Bill Peters in their previous podcast, you know, kind of led on to it is that people who ground labs are expensive. They cost a lot of money. I was actually just trying to look it up here to see uh, what my last quote for a ground ladder was, but they're expensive. And then on top of that, they're very expensive to ship, almost to the point where you're paying the same price for a ladder to ship it to you. So if you, in the last two years, had to replace your ground ladders because you tested them or, um, you know, one was damaged during a fire, you definitely don't want to go and, and spend that money again, or you would prefer not to. So that's the reason behind why that was taken out. If you have ladders that passed the test within the previous year, um, that NFPA 1932 test, then you're, you're able to use those ladders again. So it makes sense in some sort to, to allow that flexibility and to, you know, if I don't have to spend three, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 on ladders, then that's money that I can put into other options on my fire truck because I'm, I'm starting to build it. Uh, the problem is there's a lot that in the, in the back end there that we have to think of, and especially in the spec process, is if we don't give the, lab, the manufacturer of our, our, our fire apparatus the proper ground ladders, what we're carrying, the right brand, even the right model number of ground ladder, then when they build our ladder tunnel out or when they do a weight rating on our ladder, then we're not gonna have it. And then along with that, the recommendation is there for a reason. It, it kind of stops firefighters from just doing anything that they want. So we potentially now could be building fire trucks, ladder trucks, uh, especially even, even pumpers, where they're coming from the factory with no ground ladders on it and none ever get put on it. So I think there's a downside there that we have to be careful with. I, I see that happening less, but the bigger issue is if you don't tell the manufacturers exactly what you have, um, then, then that could be an issue down the road. If you miss the fact that your 35 is a three section versus a two section, um, you're going to run into a lot of trouble uh, when they back that new ladder truck into your building and you go to put your, your ladders into it. So I think that's, that's the big thing from 1900. It's, you know, it's understandable why they did that. But again, there's that, there's that downfall 
um, along the back end. And, you know, not only, not only when you're building trucks, but when you go to sell that fire truck, if you're selling that without ground ladders on it, then you're probably going to devalue that truck a decent amount. Um, you know, again, so, and then the other thing too, is if you plan on, you know, we don't know what's going to happen 10, 15 years down the road, your fire department at a mine point might have merged. You might need that ladder truck for a reserve where now we need to go because we don't have ground ladders on it, or we're not buying ground ladders for their new truck that we have to go and replace those ladders down the road as well. So there's a lot, a lot to that, you know, the goods and the bads, but no, I think that's, I think you bring up a really a really good point there, um, and that is um, when record keeping. Um, it's very easy. I actually have a, a question to go into this, but it's very easy to be able to say uh, to the manufacturer, "I am buying these new ladders. Here are the model numbers, um, et cetera. But you know, I'm I'm thinking about my own fire company right now. I'm not sure that anyone. Uh, who wasn't on the purchasing committee for the most recent trucks we brought in um, could tell anybody else what who the manufacturer of the ladder is, what the model number of the ladder is. So record keep and and also you don't know the apparatus purchasing committee that bought these two might not be the same. There might not be the same people on the next one. So record keeping and making sure that um, that that you have it, you know it 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 can be. It's not as simple as saying I've got a three section, 35 footer. I mean, because, you know, every one of them is going to be different. Um, but I did have a question about that. And you mentioned, you know, making sure that, you know, we tell them the, who, who built the ladder and stuff like that. Do, do we have to get as granular as giving dimensions and all that stuff? Or can the manufacturer take it from there once we say, you know, I got brand X, ladder here it's a it's a three section 35 footer i've got a two section 28 footer etc do, do, do you should we ant expect that the manufacturer can take it from there or should we be getting that granular where we're getting into dimensions this this is what scares me with this is is i would want to be that granular i would want them to have my exact dimensions um because again if you give them hey we have you know brand a ladder um it's a two section you know, whatever model and they say, okay, but, but your ladder was made slightly different that year or whatever, then they're building a ladder tunnel in, you know, in the factory that's made to what the current dimensions are. Something could have changed somewhere down the road there. Anything could have happened to it. I, I think I would much prefer to give them, especially if I'm, if I'm using my older ladders, I want to give them those dimensions. Um, because again, if you mix those ladders up, you're talking two um, two inches sometimes between the rungs or the rails of the ladder, and then the width of the ladder as well. There's there's a huge difference that, that can go into play there, and we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get into specking. But if you're not giving them exactly what you have, then that's going to fall onto you when they again when it backs into your firehouse and it doesn't fit, it's going to be your responsibility. Whereas if you go out to do a final inspection and you go to pull your ground ladders out to test the fitment of the, the ladder tunnel and the ladder bed, then if it's tight coming out, then that's on them and they're going to have to make that correction. Um, so again, that's, that's a trade-off that you have to be willing to take. And I want to give them every bit of information I could to make, make sure that what they're going to put in there is going to fit for me. One other question about NFPA, um, uh, just, <clears throat> Um, is there a maximum amount of time you're allowed to keep the ladders or do they just have to keep passing the test? We, we had that conversation this morning. As far as we can tell, they just have to pass the test. I mean, we, we talked about how NFBA has time limits for 10 years on a lot of stuff. Um, but most people are keeping our ladder trucks 20, 25 years. Um, whether that's a good idea or not, that's what, that's the reality of, of the situation we're in, especially today. Um, you know, that, that really is a reality. Um, so, you know, there is no time limit that, that Nick and I could find today. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll gladly take corrections on that, uh, but, but we could not find a time limit. Just, just as long as it's, you know, you're tested annually. And technically, the, the standard only says that it has to be tested the year prior to the apparatus going in service. So, you know, if you didn't test them for 10 years and then all of a sudden you say, hey, we're going to keep these ladders and none of them fail, which would probably be highly unlikely, but you get that lucky, then 
you're good to go and you don't technically have to do it. I mean, obviously you would want to do it again, but, or you should be doing it yearly. Um, but the standard only calls for it to be tested the one year prior. Nick, anything to add to any of that? No, I think you hit the nail on the head, to be honest. I mean, I think, um, you know, really just goes back to, uh, the department and, uh, you know, we're definitely going to dive deeper into different manufacturers ladders and, and kind of what that means. But um, that is a, a huge thing to look out for when you're obviously specking your ladder truck. And just because your ladders that you have at your firehouse now, it would be cheaper. doesn't mean it's going to be better either, because, you know, we're going to hit on a couple of points of that will really make you think about the ladder complement that you have now and and uh, the different manufacturers ladders, too. Now. I wanted to get a little bit into, we're going to start talking about, you know, the assessment. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into deciding on the ladder complement that you want to buy for, you know, whether it's whether it's a, a ladder truck or whether it's, you know, you, whether you want to do something special with an engine. Um, our rescue truck uh, carries a 24 foot or so um, and, and a 16 foot roof. So, you know, there, there are different things that go into that. Certainly your response area but a lot of it has to do with knowing surrounding companies, staying up to date on you know what's in service, what's not in service, and making sure that if that ladder uh, truck is is out of service, um, that that you have on 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 your first due, um, on on your first uh, arriving apparatus, you know you can at least get started uh, throwing ladders. Nick, could you talk a little bit about I guess for lack of a better term, just just knowing what your neighbors have, neighboring fire companies have. Yeah, and I think uh, people overlook that a little bit, and you know they uh, they see on Facebook or they talk at you know a chiefs meeting uh, for you know county chiefs council or, or or some sort of get together or luncheon, and they say, "Ah, oh, we got a new ladder truck." It's oh great, why'd you do our box? Or hey, glad you're coming, right? Or um, you know, twenty seven years ago they had them on as automatic alarm or automatic mutual aid or mutual aid because they had a ladder truck, and they've gotten one or two new ladder trucks since then, and they've never put a you know second set of eyes on it. Um, and, you know, like I mentioned kind of in the beginning, we do fleet evaluations and fire protection studies uh, with emergency vehicle response. And we travel the country doing these. And it's amazing. We'll go to places um, and, and do inspections. And, you know, we, we evaluate the fire company that we're there to evaluate first. We drive around the first new area and, you know, we shock a lot of chief officers and commissioners and uh, politicians when we drive to the neighboring firehouses. And they're like, oh, they have a ladder truck. I know. Okay, cool. Have you ever looked at it? Have you ever seen what ladder complement they have? And it's kind of like, oh yeah, I think they got a, you know, they got a couple twenty fours, and uh, and you start really digging deeper into it, and they they really just don't understand it. And sometimes people in the, the same fire company don't understand what type of ladders or ground ladders they have, right? Um, and so we've gone to places where we show up at a firehouse, look in the fire station, there's no ladder truck there. They say, oh no, that thing's been moved to station two. That hasn't been here in the last eighteen months. And you're like, well. Who knew about that? And you look at the fire chief and they're like, well, I didn't really know about that. And it's like, well, where's the communication then, right? These guys are on automatic mutual aid and now they're six miles farther away from your first due than they were before. Um, so that's that's definitely a huge consideration. Um, we've gone to places where they had an emergency council meeting of all the fire chiefs in a whole entire county because the entire county had two 35 foot ladders. And they didn't realize that, that no one, everyone thought someone else was bringing them and no one had them. Um, and so they all had to put money together and their heads together and figure out where were we going to get these ladders? Um, you know, that kind of goes to driving and, and sizing up your first due too. When you drive around, people are driving around the fronts of these homes and drive the same route to and from work, to and from the firehouse. They're not really checking out any other areas. And we've gone to so many places that it's a two-story house from the front, but in the rear, there's that basement access and it drops off to three stories in the rear. And you just ask the fire chief or whoever you're riding with, how are you going to get firefighters out from those windows? Obviously, we, we want to talk about civilians and rescuing them, but at the end of the day, the ground ladders are there for us, right? We're the ones going past the fire to make the push to put ourselves in, in the dangerous spot. And we're going to be there when the fire progresses past, you know, the point that it was when we first arrived. So how are we going to get our people out if they're trapped there? And, you know, people come up with bailout systems and all these other reasons or ways to kind of do it. And at the end of the day, nothing beats that ground ladder, right? Um, if we can get access with a ground ladder, we should be doing our best uh, to, to do that. Um, 
you know, we've seen, uh, I mean, there's a picture circling around there on, on the internet uh, of a bird's nest in a, in a 35 foot ladder on the side of an engine, right? So are they practicing with them? Are they using them? Uh, do they even know how to use them? When was the last time they were taken out? These are all questions as a, a fire chief, as a firefighter, I would want to know of my neighbors. If I don't have a ladder truck and the neighboring departments aren't equipped the right way, well, then what am I going to do? Uh, Chris, you mentioned about carrying a 24 footer on the rescue squad, right? NFPA does not require any ladders on the rescue squad. So that's up to the, the department, right? If the neighboring companies don't have 35 footers and your department needs one, then put one on the rescue truck, right? That any rig that you have, uh, we just left a place in, uh, in New York, uh, not too far outside New York City, and they had uh, an engine and a pumper tanker that each had a 35 foot three section, uh, 24 and a 14 footer because their area needed taller ladders. They realized the need and without a ladder truck, they with two rigs had what a ladder truck complement would carry, you know? Um, so they kind of bridged that gap. So there's definitely the, uh, the understanding of who's around you, what they're doing. And it's not a, a one-time ask either. It's a consistent checking in basis and that open line of communication with your neighbors for sure. Quinn, anything from the spec side? Um, yeah, just to build on on that, you know, we're, we're talking about ladder trucks there a lot. I mean, you mentioned a rescue truck, but I think that you have to look at, at that too when you're building that pumper. Like Nick said, if you don't have if you don't have a ladder truck in your area, or it's coming from 15, 20 plus miles away, and it's going to take 20 minutes to get there, then your your first two or three pumpers have to be able to handle that duty. So you know, again, if you're going to carry a 24 and a 14 on your your initial attack pumper, then your second out pumper should be able to handle that backside. So you can at least get, um, you know, some ladders up on on two or three sides of the building, or at least to where the, the point of the emergency is, like Nick said, if there's a firefighter trapped. Um, so that second ladder, again, you need to get back and see, hey, you know, we're relatively flat, or we definitely need that full 35 foot um, to get to that third floor of a, of a walk, you know, a, a house with a walkout basement. Um, so even when you're specking pumper trucks or rescue trucks, like um, everything needs to be considered in that case. You know, we need to look at that. And, um, you know, we can't just, you know, just go with a standard ladder complement because that's what everybody does. You have to look at it and say, what what ladder complement is going to fit my needs? And, you know, I think we've all at some point, if you build a ladder truck, you've probably been or a ladder truck in the last 10 or 15 years probably somewhat guilty of saying, hey, those guys over there, they just put 315 feet of ground ladders on the truck. We can get 320. And you don't really look at the ground ladders that you need. So you throw three or four 35s on there. Hey, we're we're rocking it out here. We're going to beat them. But your 35s are, are just going to be a hassle when you're trying to go to a second story, you know, window constantly. It's just more work, more people, um, just more bulk. So, you know, again, it's making sure that you are specking the ladders for your area um, and yeah, for your area and to get hung up there. So. Well, it's like, uh, it's like Bill Adams, one of our authors has often said in his articles, um, you know, the, his, his, when he was a chief, it was uh, throw, keep throwing ladders until I tell you to stop. So, uh, you know, and that it's critical for, for firefighter safety as well as civilian safety as well. Um, one of the talk you you Nick and uh, when you both you both uh, touched on it just now uh, and that's and that's considerations for knowing your district getting out and driving it like like you were saying Nick uh, you mentioned the uh, you know two stories on on side on side one or side A and side uh, C or side three um, being you know being three stories are there other things that uh, as 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 a as a department is going out to start its ground ladder uh, needs assessment. Are there other things besides besides that 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 they need to be looking at when um, when when uh, when when they're getting ready to to, to decide what they're going to purchase? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, big things that we we look for, and we've gotten the uh, you know stressed out emergency phone call from many departments across the country of Hey, we're we're looking to buy a fire truck here, and we need some advice. And they start kind of going into what's kind of happening in their area and you realize quickly that hey listen this isn't just an aerial needs assessment or this just isn't a 
uh, you know, we want help with this one fire truck purchase. This is a, you need a fleet evaluation, a fire protection study. You have a huge area that's changing rapidly in front of your eyes. And, you know, with the lead times now, you're two to four years from fixing anything that's going to happen. Um, they're building buildings faster than we can get a fire truck delivered into, uh, you know, our fire department. So, um, you know, we just left a, a, a place not too long ago that, they had five or six, uh, four story, uh, four or five and six story apartment buildings going up. Well, you have a ladder truck now. That's great. If you're carrying a 28 footer, a, a 24 and a couple 16s, uh, there's not much you're going to do to that building. I mean, you're hopefully your, your ladder can get access to it. And as you look at it, most of them are only required to have side alpha access. So the, the Bravo, Charlie and Delta sides or the two, three and four side. You really don't have anything to even touch those places. So it's not even putting a 35 on there. It's a 40 or 45 banger ladder, possibly a 50. Um, and you know, there's a lot of people that kind of just negate that because of staffing and other concerns too. And I'm here to tell you, I was on a, a fire in Montgomery County across the border from Prince George's County. Montgomery County staffs their ladder trucks with three people. The first due ladder truck we arrived on scene with, uh, we were second due from College Park, but the first due was a Montgomery County truck. They arrived on scene with three people. They gave a size up of uh, fire shown from the second floor, uh, auto extending up to the fifth. That's, uh, that's a lot of volume of fire with multiple people trapped inside. People, kids were home from school, were trapped in the building, people hanging out of balconies. Uh, three people showing up to that. That's, uh, that's not enough, right? So. Um, you know, we were lucky and fortunate that we had, uh, uh, seven personnel on our ladder truck that day. So, uh, we divided up into three teams, interior teams, uh, exterior teams throwing ladders, and then another, uh, exterior team going up a ladder into another apartment to do searches. Uh, we were able to, uh, confirm negative searches on the floor above the fire and all that. But while this was going on, we had, uh, five Montgomery County cops with two firefighters, one that was the truck driver, the first two trucks. The other was the second new engine driver who threw a 45 foot banger ladder together and made a rescue off a balcony of an upper story floor. Um, so if you don't carry the ladder with you, you'll never get there. So, you know, you can talk about staffing all day long, but uh, there's plenty of fires we went to that were throwing ladders and civilians are helping or police officers are helping stretch lines, move hose, whatever. Um, if you don't bring it with you, it's, it's never going to get there. Uh, and that's a huge consideration and for Prince George's County for a while. They required 45 foot ladders. We had these buildings popping up everywhere and there was no access. Um, and so that's, that's something else to kind of consider is where, where am I going to get to? Where am I able to get to? Yeah. We have this big, you know, tall ladder on top of our ladder truck, but where can I actually park this thing to get access? Um, and that's something to work with the fire marshal's office or. Um, the, the buildings department where, you know, you can put down matting around the, 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 the Bravo and Charlie sides of buildings so that you can drive fire trucks on them. Uh, you can require access when they get building approval or you, you know, have to look at the ladder component you carry and, and adjust it there. Um, so there's de definitely a, def a couple of different options that you can have. Um, but it's definitely something you have to consider and look at. Uh, otherwise you're going to miss the boat. When, from a spec standpoint, when we're thinking about the future of, of, of our first due and, and what could be coming down the line, and we're coupling it with uh, right now extended uh, lead times, um, a lot of times we talk about uh, compartments. Um, and we have, a, we have one of our authors is always talking about making sure that you plan larger compartments, plan for future equipment purchases, and, and you know, make, to ensure that you'll have room to carry all this stuff. Um, when we're talking about that in terms of ladder complement, how do you plan for that when, when you're specking it out? Do you just kind of leave a slot or leave, leave a certain amount of space for potential future ground ladders that you would need? Or um, what, 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 what's, what's, the best, uh, what's the best practice there? I think that, that, like Nick said, that there's there's a couple things that go, go into that. The first one, the first one is the NFPA change that won't allow Nick and Cottage Park to ride seven to their next fire next time they build a ladder truck with the seat change. But but as far as compartment spacing, I, I think that you have to look um, at and and I, I think this is with anything, right? When we sit down to design, it, it can't just be oh we're going to design a a rescue engine or a ladder truck or a quint. I mean a ladder truck. A pumper; those are two 
relatively simple things. But the minute we try to combine two things, um, a, a pumper or a rescue pumper or a quint, we have to sit down and, and really from the start say, what is the true purpose of this? Is it a um, is it a pumper that has rescue capabilities or is it a rescue that has a pump on it? Is it a ladder that has you know a pump on it or is it a an engine that has a ladder on it? And I think those are those are the big things. So if you sit down in and you prioritize what you want to do, then from there you can prioritize your ladder tunnels. Ladder tunnels are or compartment space based on your ladders. Your ladder tunnels or your torque box area are gonna, they're they're kind of a a pre-dictated area. That's there's one space that's there and that's it. And you have to, again, based on the complement of ladders you need, figure out how to fit all that stuff in there. Um, if you feel like that is not enough ground ladders for your first do, then you got to start looking at the side of your truck and you have to start looking at how much compartment space do I feel comfortable giving up? And again, that's based on what the true nature or purpose of the truck is. If it's a ladder truck, that happens to have a pump on it for resale or whatever, then you can give up a whole lot of space to get more ladders on it. If you function truly as a ladder company where you do search, overhaul, a little bit of salvage and ground ladders, then again, we can give that up. But if you're trying to do a ladder truck where now you're putting a rescue tool on it or things like that, then we, you know, you start to, that, that compartment space starts to become a premium. So again, I think from a, a specking point of view, it starts with those questions at the very beginning is, what is the true purpose of this and what are we going to prioritize? And then from there, we can go, we can, you know, move on. If, um, if you, okay, you buy it five years later, um, the first due has changed a little bit or your first due has changed a little bit. Now you need to, you need to, tweak this a little bit, tweak that ladder complement a mm -hmm. little bit. How easy is it not necessarily to add ladders to what's already there? Because I mean, the space is the space, like you said. Um, but if, if I'm taking out one or two and, and putting, you know, and, and, and replacing with, with different lengths or different, uh, different sections, um, how easy is it to reconfigure that ladder ladder tunnel? Are we, are we talking about like a really, really major job here where maybe we ought to think about some other things? Um, or is it uh, something where, you know, yeah, it's going to be out of service for a little while, but it's not the end of the world? Yeah, I, I think it's a doable thing. The, um, the brackets in the ladder tunnel are, are completely removable. Um, they're, they're held in by screws. Somebody's going to have to climb in there and, um, and, and unscrew that. Uh, but then those things will just slide out and then you can have a, a fab shop basically rebuild it um, to, to fit. You know, you go say you need a, a 45 at that point. Um, you know, unfortunately, you're going to give up some of your smaller ladders. But if that becomes the priority, then, you know, again, we look at the pumpers at that point or the rescues. Hey, what can we change on these? You know, so it's probably not going to just be one change there. You're going to look at changing you know, your pumper ladders and, and other things. But yeah, we, they can slide those things out, make you new um, brackets for lack of a better term. That's not really the term I want to use. And then slide them back in and, you know, just replace the ladders. You know, again, the, the issue there becomes the time frame on ladder delivery. It, it takes almost a year to get a ladder. So, you know, this is something that you're going to have to be planning for, um, but it, it can be done relatively easy. You know, you Add inside stack ladders to it, that's going to be a little bit different. You know, we're talking body, you know, uh, modifications there. So that's probably going to be a little bit out of out of the range or, or scope of the work. But but the ladder tunnel could be easily adjusted. I think that's something to consider, too, with a, a used ladder truck. You know, if you're buying or looking in for a used ladder truck, used Quint, um, don't settle for the ladder complement that came with it. That's not something you have to be married to. Um, the last figure, and again, I mean, I could tell you a figure I got five seconds ago and that number figure wouldn't be good anymore with today's market. Uh, but the last figure I remember without ladders involved at all was a couple thousand dollars to get a, a ladder tunnel redone and, and refabbed. Uh, obviously it's going to depend on the manufacturer and a whole bunch of other stuff. And like Wynn alluded to earlier, weight, right? You know, you're adding a 45 compared to other ladders you want to take and make sure that uh, before the modifications, you're weighing the fire truck, and then after modifications, you're weighing to make sure you're within those those weight limits. Um, you know, besides the NFPA now 10 
being very clear, you should be wearing it every year. And after any major modification or repair, you should just be doing that anyway. And I know a lot of places that aren't weighing fire trucks when they come in from the manufacturer are not weighing them after repairs and definitely aren't doing it yearly. Uh, and that's another thing that we kind of find that's a little off with uh, with different uh, fire departments when we go around doing our inspections. That's an interesting point as well, the the weight of it. You, brought, you both brought up a couple of interesting points throughout that discussion, uh, the weight, the weight factor, but also, you know, um, uh, we're speaking specifically about ground ladder complements, and we were talking about the NFPA in the beginning and some of the changes that came along with 1900 um, regarding the ground ladder complement. But then we were also talking about staffing, um, and you know, you do need to think about you know how many people you're bringing along when it comes to uh, uh, deploying the ladders. And you know, as 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 you said, Nick, everything's adjustable. I mean, you can grab some people from another crew should you need it. The driver. Uh, of, of of things if, if 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 that's necessary. So I'm not saying that uh, I'm not saying that that it's impossible to put these things up, but it's good to think about the staffing. But then, um, but then as uh, Wynn just mentioned, you know, uh, something that we're not even talking about today that's going to impact that with the, with the staffing is you know the seating uh, uh, requirements in NFPA 1900. Now I don't I don't want to get into that now, uh, but you know, word to the wise, you know, you're going to want to take a look at that when you're planning. Uh, when you're planning that that uh, that next rig, that uh, you're you're likely going to be carrying fewer people. Um, so we we touched on this in the beginning, uh, and we were talking about it in terms of dimensions of ladders and and knowing the model that you're going to go with. And um, you know, we teased it a little bit that we'd be getting into it later. So I want to get into that now, Nick. Um, when when we're when we're talking about the ground ladder assessment, even the ladders themselves, you know, we okay, we've looked at the first two. We've, we've done all of our, our research ahead of time. Um, we're ready to start, you know, placing orders. But even, you know, the, 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 the manufacturer that you're going to go with on the ladder uh, is, going to, is, going to, uh, is going to impact, you know, what you're going to do. And no one says that you have to uh, uh, stock a truck with la ground ladders that are all from the same, uh, same manufacturer often. Uh, we run with 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 different manufacturers. We mix and match, but you know, and we'll get into this with with when you know that's when you really need to make sure that you're that you're getting into uh, get getting into uh, you know um, um, uh, the uh, the dimensions and all that kind of stuff. And Nick, talk a little bit about you know what people need to be thinking about. You know, okay, so they've done all their homework in terms of the the district. They've thought about you know how they want how they want to uh, lay the truck out. Now we have to pick the ladders. So I think, uh, you know, big things to, to consider are there's there's two different manufacturers out there, major manufacturers of ground ladders, Duo Safety and Alkalite. Um, you know, the facts are out there, right? So doing your research is, is huge, right? We have different banking uh, thicknesses, different lengths, different bedded lengths, uh, one section, two section, three section. And then the big one is weight, right? How much is this ground ladder going to weigh? Uh, I think there's a lot of things that people overlook with those um, you know, if you have a thinner banking thickness, that's great. We can fit more ground ladders back there. But is there a difference in the width of the ladder and the weight of the ladder, right? What other things dimensionally change about that ladder? So really, you need to get yourself a chart, figure out, hey, I need, uh, you know, 16 footers and I need 28 footers or 35 footers. Like this is kind of what I need. And then from there, your, your work's not done, right? You found out the length of the ladder. Now we need to figure out what's going to fit on a ladder truck, and then what operationally is going to work for us. If we have, uh, you know, three people riding on a ladder truck and we have 100 pounds worth of ladders versus 50 pounds worth of ladders, that's a huge difference, right? We have an excellent amount of energy for someone to, to put into the fire, right? And we have a lot of tasks that need to get done. So if we can lessen the weight down, then that's great. That's a, that's a huge advantage. Um, but then if we can't fit the ladders to get them there, then that's that's a problem, too. So there's a lot of things that you need to put into as far as thought as to what types of ladders we're going to need. Uh, other things to consider are, you know, one, two, three section ladders. Right. You know, is it going to be uh, 16 foot, 20 foot, 24 foot? Well, we have 16 footers that we can do two section. Right. Uh, instead of just one. And it only adds a couple pounds. Um, but that's something that now getting the side trolley, going around to the backside, that we have great access um, into a building now because we're not carrying around 16 feet of ground ladders, right? It's it's only nine feet and, and a bedded length for the most part. 
Um, so that helps us get over fences, around uh, houses, right? Uh, gets us a different look. So as a truck driver, it gives you ability to carry two, suitcase them around back, have a great view of the backside of the house, throw the ladders. Um, and again, if you have that weird half story, then the nine foot uh, bedded length, you know, that's going to get you into those, those different types of windows. Um, so uh, one of my favorite ladders out there from College Park and Arlington both carry them. Um, and, you know, it just gives you that different variety. If you just had a ladder truck with all straight 16s and all 35s, that might work out well, but then there's going to be those weird off uh, windows where you see the off angles of ladders, and it doesn't give you that ability to kind of be um, flexible with what you're showing up to on the fire ground. Um, so having those different variations of one, two, three section ladders, uh, different lengths of ladders is, is, is pretty big to, to know and understand. Again, those manufacturers, everything's posted out there online. Please go do your research before uh, you dive in deep. It's a pretty big investment and you're going to need to put the space on the fire truck to fit them too. Now, when that's and, and just jumping right in with with what Nick just wrapped up with, which is, you know, finding the space on the fire truck. But as, as he was talking, we talked a lot about the, the weight of the ladders and the weight of the ladders and how that's going to impact um, deploying the ladders, depending on how many how many people you have coming on the rig and all that stuff. Once you figure all that out, now you got to figure out how much all this weighs, how much how much that's going to uh, impact the the specification. So talk talk about how all those things and Nick just talked uh, Nick just mentioned. Talk about how they now play into the the poor guy that's got to put together put together these specs and possibly coming back with some bad news where it's going to be like, man, you put this many ladders over here. This is you, you, we're going to, have to put a triaxle on it in order to get the in order to get it to to weigh uh, to 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 carry it. So talk about talk about the the specification um, implications from what Nick just talked about. Sure, I, I, I think it goes to back to a lot of the stuff that we talked about earlier. It's it's that size up of your first do and what do you truly need. Um, and then again, the, the purpose of this fire truck, um, a, a quint apparatus is obviously going to have a smaller torque box. So that's going to affect you going from a two section 35 to a three section 35. Um, a two section 28 most likely will fit, but again, that 35 is not going to in a two section. You're not going to be able to get a banger ladder or a 40 or 45, 50 footer, you know, in that area. Uh, so again, that the purpose of this fire truck comes into play as to what you're going to carry. Same thing when you're looking at, at your first do. Why, why do people carry 20 foot roof ladders? Most people will say they're for Cape Cods. But that's, that's the only thing that I can ever really think a 20-foot roof ladder is really good for. It's kind of that intermediate range where it's, it's too high for a second story, but it's too low for a third story. Um, so to me, it's almost the worth of ladder. So if I can get rid of a 20-section straight ladder because we only use them for uh, Cape Cod peak roofs, when I can fully extend my, my 35 and lay it down and utilize that as a ladder from the ground on a roof, then that allows me to buy space to put something else in there. Um, it's the same thing. Nick talked about um, those those two 16s being uh, nine foot or, or a, a two section 16 being nine foot. Well, maybe if I'm willing to give up a little bit more compartment space in an area where I could maybe only get one 16, I can put two 16s side by side. So now I can increase my ladders. I can increase what, if you live in a single family dwelling, a very, very, uh, capable ground ladder of handling the second floor, then we're increasing that. The other thing I think people look at when they, or when they're spec and fire trucks they miss, is if you look in the Northeast, side stack ladders are a pretty big deal. But if you look, 35s, 28s, big ladders are on the sides of the ladder truck, which is nice if the ladder's not on its jacks. Once you start to jack that ladder up, then it gets super high, it's off the ground, and now you have 140, you know, 120, 140 pounds above your head, that if you don't have the two or three people to help get that down, then you're in trouble. So again, you want to look at as you're specking that truck, maybe we put the big ladders in the back and we put our small ladders, our single or straight wall ladders, two section 16s, et cetera, on the side so that we can limit, um, you know, workplace injuries, but also still consider, still be able to carry the ground ladders that we want to carry. Um, again, it gets into that what, What's the purpose of this truck and what are you willing to give up? I know at Oxford, at the Union Fire Company, Oxford, where I volunteer, we don't have a pump on our ladder truck. So we were able to, 
because we don't do rescue with it, we don't need that transverse compartment. So instead of the outriggers, the forward outriggers being behind the first compartment, we pushed them all the way up behind the cab. And what that did is it extended the space that we could give up for a ladder tunnel. Now we lost the transverse compartment, but we didn't really need it. So again, it's what you're willing to give up, what you truly need to have on your apparatus. And then it's working with the apparatus manufacturers. You, you at times to do what you want to do are going to have to pay for it. Um, whether there's an engineering fee, um, if you want to switch a ladder from the left side of the truck to the right side of the truck, and they've never done that before, you're going to have to pay for it. So again, it's not an overly expensive cost, but it's still something that that you have to factor into the price of your fire truck. And you just have to be willing to, you know, again, you're building a ladder truck probably for 15 to 20 years. You need to make sure that that what you do up front is going to hopefully last you through that time period and make that truck functional for that time period. Chris, I do want to jump in there real quick and add on to what Lynn said. One thing that I noticed too, when we go around the country and, you know, we were guilty of it in Arlington a little bit and definitely in College Park way back in the day is that ladder tunnel storing those hooks. You know, I've seen people store four, five, six foot hooks, three, eight foot hooks, two, three, 10 foot hooks, a couple 20 foot hooks in the back. And now there goes your ladder storage because, because all the hooks are back there. Um, you know, I think now, uh, you know, College Park, I think we're down to one eight, one ten, and one twelve in the back. You know, we don't, we have a bunch of people that ride in that fire truck, but the, you know, the ability or the hazard of us needing a, you know, a 15 or 20 foot hook is, is kind of gone, right? We're not running the church fires that we used to do. Um, the buildings are kind of just set up differently. Uh, so that, that's another thing that can kind of clog up that area. One thing we did in Arlington County, which was interesting too, is the first time I've kind of seen it. We took our attic ladder out of the back rear storage area and we put it up on the side, actually. Um, and we put it, you know, it's kind of up out of the way, unfortunately, but it opened up our ladder tunnel to be able to put what we wanted to put back there and use all that space. You know, you got to think about in Arlington, we're all within a mile of each other. Most of the firehouses are a couple miles of each other. So an engine company is right down the road. And what is an engine carrier? A 10 foot attic ladder right down there on the ground. So really, you're not going to the ladder truck. You're just going to go to the engine and grab it. They're going to be parked right next to each other. Um, so, and honestly, there's been zero complaints. It's been in service now three years or so. Um, and it was one of the best things I think that we did to open up that ladder tunnel. So just one of those couple things that, you know, you open up a ladder tunnel and you see a bunch of hooks, you see a bunch of things that could be put in five or six other places in the ladder truck. And it's all stuffed there in the back, or you have the little giant in the back ladder tunnel. And you're like, you could put that literally anywhere else on this fire truck. And you took the prime real estate for ground ladders. And it's and it's gone. So just something else to kind of consider when when you're looking at that and specking that out. Yeah, and can I can I keep going with that spec thing just one more second? Absolutely. Um, you know, again, you talked about it how we don't have to use the same ladder manufacturer to accomplish what we're trying to do. Uh, we ran into that in Arlington. We're switching from a rear mount to a mid mount tower, um, and we still wanted our ladder complement. But when we we put it in there, they came back and said, "Hey, you can do it, but you're going to have to sign an NFPA waiver." because the ladder tunnel is going to be so tight. So we said, okay, well, what happens if we switch brands and if we switch our 16 footers? So, you know, weight wise, we're going to minimize where that weight is into a smaller ladder. We take the 16s and we switch brands and that allowed us to shrink the beams of the ladder down, which bought us four inches essentially that allowed us to fit the, the ladders we wanted in there. So again, there's, there's lots of things that you can do. Um, you know, it's just, it's asking the questions and making, you know, making sure that you get the answers. I, I think that almost um, falls right into what I almost consider apparatus design 101. And that is everything is a trade-off. Um, you know, everything, if you want the hooks back in the ladder tunnel, that's fine, but you're going to lose some room for, for the ladders. Um, everything you were just talking about, you know, if you, um, this is this is simplifying it, oversimplifying it. But if you are, if you love just one ladder manufacturer and that's the one you always want to go with, but you need extra space and, and now mixing it up uh, will give you that extra four or five inches, whatever it was like you just described, it's a trade-off. Um, if you wanna if you wanna carry a pump on it, you're likely going to have to choose ladders that when they are uh, when when you when when they're bedded or when they're in the tunnel. They're going to have to be shorter than uh, than 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 maybe you're used to. 
um, and you're going to be talking about three section uh, ladders more than likely. So, you know, everything everything is to to accomplish the length. You're going to be talking about three section ladders. So everything is a is is a trade off, and that just that's just always something to keep in mind. I mean, yeah, you know, the manufacturers can do whatever you want, but if you want it in you know this long, you know you're probably going to have to trade some things off, and that actually kind of leads into the into the next question I've got for you, and that you know with with the ladders, how does ladder placement affect the rest of the of the apparatus? We just mentioned you know um, you know the pump and all that kind of stuff, but you know that that's actually something else impacting the choice of ladder. How does the choice of where you locate those ladders affect uh, the rest of the apparatus's operation? Nick, I'll start with you on that one. Um, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, for College Park, we took ground ladders really seriously. Um, this is not a knock at Boston, but Prince George's County, I think those ladders a little bit better than Boston. And we have a nice little uh, tiff back and forth when you talk to some of the guys in the Boston area, because I think they, uh, you know, besides Prince George's County, the D.C. area, they're one of the top tier of throwing ground ladders. And you look at some of the other big cities and they're not really as close, right? They're just whether it's not the need or there's just not the, the pressure. Uh, I think Prince George's County, the D.C. area and Boston are probably the two top in, in the country. And so that was huge for us going into a ladder truck spec. And, um, you know, we looked at how <laughs> – now, what's the tip load and how long our ladder is up top? And the second thing we looked at was ground ladder storage. Nothing else mattered. The cab didn't matter. The manufacturer didn't matter. Nothing else mattered in our ladder truck spec. It was, this is the ladders that we need to be successful. This is what we need to fit on a ladder truck. And, you know, you can send out when you're specking a fire truck a request for a proposal. You can send out all these different things. We basically had, this is the list of ground ladders that we want on a ladder truck. This is the tip load. This is the ladder. And this is generally the dimensions we wanted in. Figure it out. And we let any manufacturer that we wanted to come in and bid, this is how important this is to us. And some took it more seriously than others. Some were able to provide more than others, right? Just like anything else in the world. Um, and so we had to take that information and, and kind of dissect it and figure out what was going to be the best manufacturer for us to choose from to get what we needed to get from uh, the ladder truck. And so I think, uh, you know, if it's not one, it's top two. Uh, you add a pump, a tank, and all those things, I think that becomes secondary to an extent, right? Because those ground ladders, there's a handful of spots, you know, in the back ladder tunnel, on the left side, the right side, and the aerial. There's really the three places you can put a ladder, and, <laughs> and that's it. So anything else can, you know, I mean, the pump and the tank can fit in this area, but you can go bigger, smaller, and take up more and less space. Everything else can fit anywhere else for the most part. So I think it's really the foundation besides the tires and, and the body itself of, of any ladder truck. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Nick there. I think that's one of the first, if you're designing a ladder truck, that's one of the first conversations you have to have with your manufacturer or whoever it's going to be. If you're putting it out to bid or you're, you're, you're pulling off of a, a consortium is a, that you want, you want to see what the ladder tunnel is going to look like right off the bat. You want to give them, your ladder complement and make them build your ladder truck to, to that, or, or at least give you the best that they can do so that you can see. Uh, because if you go into it and try to build around the ladder tunnel and then add them last year, you're always going to lose in that, in that venture. So that should be uh, one of the first things that you ask for is I want a picture of the ladder tunnel that you're going to provide me in this apparatus. What can I fit in it? Um, and, and does it meet my, my specifications or my needs really of, of that first do. Um, as far as as placement, I, you know, again, like Nick said, you really only have a certain number of places to put it. You know, the, the torque box is, is what it is. So you have to play, play Tetris and make it fit in there however you can. And then the left and the right side. I, I Some people prefer all the, le the left side, the outside. Uh, it's always the, the fire, or they call it the, you know, the fire side or, or whatever. Well, you, to me, it doesn't matter. It just, you just put them on there, right? It, it, it doesn't really matter what side it goes on. Um, I, I think that there could be some preference there, but, um, you know, again, if I have to run to one side of the truck or, or not to get it, get it on there, then, then it's, it's really not that big a deal to me. Well, again, Nick and Wynn, my thanks to you today for, uh, for sitting down with me here to talk about this. Before I let you go, uh, when I'll start with you and then we'll go to you, Nick, any, any general comments you'd like to le leave the uh, listener or the viewer with today regarding, uh, 
uh, ground uh, assessing ground ladder uh, complements and 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 specking them out. I, I think we covered it. I think it really is is, is you you need to do that needs assessment of your first due, um, and and then you need to prioritize what you want to have. It, it's real simple to say, oh, we you know we have to have a pump in a tank for whatever reason, um, but again. You, you have to really prioritize how much that pump in a tank means to you. Um, you know, do we need 500 gallons? Do we need 300 gallons? Is it just there because we're going to, we, you know, we need it for a resale value. Um, so again, you, you need to prioritize that and then, you know, do that needs assessment of what I need and then build your, build your ladder truck around your ground ladders. I think that's the biggest, the biggest takeaway is to build your ladder truck, um, you know, around your ground ladders. And then the, don't forget that the other apparatus too should most likely have ground ladders on it um, and make sure you're making the right decisions there as well. Nick? Uh, I think the most important thing to kind of consider anybody listening to this is the, is the department's responsibility. They need to understand it's their responsibility to ensure that they have the correct ground ladders for their first due and even second due area. Whoever's relying on that ladder truck, it's your responsibility to make sure that the ladder trucks are there. If you if it wasn't apparent before, NFPA made it even more apparent now, right? It is up to the authority having jurisdiction, you as the listener, to make sure that you have the ladders in your ladder truck. And with that, hopefully today, just, you know, again, this is kind of mid-surface. It wasn't quite a deep, deep dive, but it was, it was kind of touching the surface on how complex this can get. So this is how easy and how complex a ladder truck specification can get. And with that, if you don't know, seek help. This isn't saying that you need professional help. You need to hire us as a business. That's not what this conversation is about. You have neighbors. You have other departments. Uh, as Wynn had said, you know, when Arlington was going to spec their tower ladder, people on the committee were calling across the country. Any ladder truck that looked like ours, we were calling, hey, what'd you do well? What'd you mess up? Hey, I saw this on a website, on a picture. Can you tell me about that? Why'd you do this? What ladder complement did you get? How did you fit it in there? Does it work well? Does it not? I mean, with the internet and everything else that's out there, with all the information out there, use it all. Um, and if you really don't know, seek help, right? There are people that do this, not just us, other people out there that can help you. Reach out, read the articles, read the magazines, get the information out there from reputable sources to, to inform yourself and be informed. Because at the end of the day, if someone's hanging out a window and you don't have the ladder, you know, that's that's it. Right. There's nothing that can replace that. Um, so this is a, a pretty serious topic that uh, requires some knowledge and some education. So either find it yourself, seek help, seek advice, seek guidance um, and, and reach out to the brother and sister fireman. Perfect. Well, again, guys, thank you very much for for sitting down with me today. If you have a, a question for, for Nick or for Wynn that, that we didn't cover here today, let me know. I'm at chris.mcclune at clarionevents.com. Let me know. I will get, I will get your question to them and, I, and we'll, we'll get it answered for you. As well, if there are any topics that you'd like us to, that you'd like us to hit on this podcast, we have a whole, we have a plethora of uh, subject matter experts we can call on. So make sure you let us know if there's a topic that we haven't hit on yet that 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 you'd like to uh, learn more about. Let us know, and we will we will get it on there. So again, Nick, Win, my thanks to you today. Hope hopefully we'll have you back on soon to uh, either either take that deeper dive into this, or or I'm sure I'll be talking to you about some other topics as well. So thank you guys both again. Again, this has been Chris McClune. Fire apparatus and emergency equipment. Have a good one and stay safe. Thanks again, guys. Thank you.